Good evening. When traditional instrumental music is discussed nowadays, two points which often emerge are, firstly, pure examples of regional style playing are a thing of the past. And secondly, all the musicians worth recording have been recorded at this stage. Well, tonight we hope to show that those contentions are far from true. And supporting our argument will be the music of a man we recorded in our travels last year. 77 years old, County Clare fiddle player, Martin Woods. Recorded in his home in Derry Con, Mount Shannon, County Clare. That was Martin Woods playing one of the many rarely heard tunes which belong to his repertoire. Martin's home is situated about two miles from the shores of Loch Derg. And so he lives in an area which has long been associated with music and dancing. Actually, this tradition is found on both sides of the lake with the O'Brien family of Porfru, probably the best known exponents of the music on the Tipperary side. Mention of the O'Brien family illustrates the fact that music making is very much a family affair all around this area. So I asked Martin, was there a history of fiddle playing in his own family? His father played, and three, uh, three brothers played, and I played. Any account of the grandfather? No, an aunt of mine used to play a concert in the law. And as well as playing the fiddle, your father played the concertina, didn't he? The concertina, and uh, if they should all, more or less. And a tin whistle in a shop, the fife, they call it. There was a fife band around? There was in Mount Shannon at that time. <laughs> And was he good? Well, I would have suppose, you could say. That says he wouldn't be a, a math and a life class of a type, you know. Would you have many of his tunes now? I would have one wheel anyway, I suppose.
praise for you when you started out playing. <laughs> First part I was at it. Oh, it's uh, seven or eight, maybe. I often went down here to Delhi to make an oil for tunes. From home and all over to the night. I often went to, uh, down with Pat Tuohy, now we would call him, he used to call him over the name of Cooper Tuohy. He was, he was, oh, he was a very tasty little fiddler. He, he knew, first man I ever got any tips in the line of tie notes or cards or, you know. He, 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 knew, he knew all about it. He was a was band, band man too. Often left at four o'clock in the morning. He knew Dinny Lynch very well. Mm. Pat, Pat Tui. He was a very good player as well, Lynch. Oh, Lynch was. Blind. Blind. Blind fiddler. There was another man, another great fiddler, to, uh, in them days, was, he was Malone, Patrick Malone. He was, uh, the, some, uh, some would say he was as good as Lynch, but more would tell you he wasn't. Although Dinny Lynch has passed into the history of the music, his reputation survives in Martin Woods' memory and music. One of the tunes he played for us was a very graceful fiddle reel, which he called Dinny Lynch's favourite. <laughs> there by Martin Woods. Along with Dinny Lynch, other good local musicians Martin remembers were Brud Stanley, Connie Hogan, Willie Logue and Bill Mack. Some of the best local players were women and Martin mentioned two in particular, Molly Donnellan and Agnes Killeen. Here he plays one of Agnes Killeen's reels. Agnes Killeen's reel. Well, from what we've heard so far, there can be no doubt about the quality of Martin Woods' repertoire, for he possesses as fine a stock of prime dance tunes as you could wish to hear. 
However, his repertoire is as broad as it is deep, and this is what makes his music so interesting. We've listened to his performances of rare local tunes rendered in an authentic East Clare style, now with something completely different. Martin Woods there playing a waltz, a form of dance tune not often heard nowadays, but once it was an essential part of a traditional musician's repertoire. Did Martin think young musicians today have as varied a repertoire as the older players? No, no. There's scarcely ever hear playing, if they play for a band dance or something to the hornpipe and band dance time. Do you know? And, and, and Scottish, you know those, those Scottish that play like, you know? They used to play a lot of them and dancing. Band dances. Um, they used to play horn pipes for, for band dances either. Fling, you know, the fling as well. Very popular. I suppose with the musicians having to play for dances, they'd have to have as many dance tunes and types of dance tunes as was humanly possible. Well, you had to have all those, you know. Probably hop and slip jigs, uh, single time jigs as well. What was danced around here? What, what set? Real, real set. Do mm -hmm. you know what they call the plain set? Those figures, five, five figures in the plane set. It was a, a, an easier set than the reel, but the, reel, the way they used to dance the reel here, once they start, it could go on for an hour, you know. The musicians used to stop it. Get you tired. Know, get tired, yeah. And that would end with the polka? That end with the polka, yeah. They all uh, hold hands near ringing. Uh, change partners every now and every twist and all that that's a bit
polka, which he often played for the final figure of the local set, played there for us by Martin Woods. Earlier when Martin was talking about the music he got from his father, he mentioned that one of his brothers also played. One brother, Paddy, was a good fiddler. He emigrated to America and he made a number of broadcasts there. Once when he returned, he brought some music with him which he had heard in America. And among these American tunes which caught Martin's ear was this barn band. <laughs> Martin Woods playing a barn dance which he learned from his brother Paddy, who learned it in America. Well, when you're talking about fiddle music and America as mentioned, it's impossible to avoid the subject of Michael Coleman's recordings. Did the, the records of Michael Coleman penetrate as far as here? What penetrated? The penetrated to maybe two. <laughs> yes. I never knew what music was until I heard Michael Coleman. I thought all the locals were, were, were tops, do you know? Until Coleman came along. They had these records. He was, he was, I thought he was the last one. And was he? I wouldn't know. Uh, I would uh, eventually know. There was, no, it was good a fiddle now, even better, I think, do you know? At the moment, anyway. So you could take care. I can mention a few of them anyway. No harm. I can take Conor Tully, I can take uh, Paddy Kenny. Martin Hayes. Martin Hayes, Vincent Griffin, Seamus Connolly. And I can go as far as Innes, uh, Gus Tierney, he was a grand fiddler. They were, they were what they call top fiddlers. You know. Did every house have a gramophone? Not in my time. It was a rare thing. Very rare. First gramophone I saw, portable gramophone, was someone came home from America and brought it home. That was the first one. It was uh, the only one that had a, a, a gramophone. You know the ones, what you call them, with a big horn or was, was was in Wood Park. And would you gather in a house to hear these records? Oh, you would. You would. Especially when, when the Coleman, the Brad Coleman records home. Ah, it was a full house. There was no music on the records. So, for a while, and they got tired of them. And you tried to learn those tunes? Of course you did. Of course you did. You, 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 you learn the tune all right, but you have any that, you know, you be playing the bones of it. Somebody said about in, in New York, there was this a party in New York and Coleman was in it. I don't know, was it Paddy Reynolds or, or, or Morrison or someone of the other great fiddlers, you know. Somebody asked him, no, why don't you sit down and play with Coleman? Ah, he said I couldn't play with Coleman. Coleman, he'd be in... California in a minute, and he'd be in Chicago in a second, and he'd be back here in New York again. You know, 
He was putting in all different pieces and going around about. Couldn't play it. Now, as well as the American commercial recordings, another powerful source of influence on traditional music was radio. Ah, uh, that's not so long ago at all. There was no, sure, there was no, we had no radios in my time, anyway. Do you know? Uh, when was the Eucharistic Congress in 32, was it? Mm hmm Very few, there was very few radios at that time. And probably very little traditional music on the radio. The only one you'd hear would be would be Frank O'Higgins. Leo Rawson. Leo Rawson. Yes, he was on too. But was Higgins used to broadcast a lot that time. He was very often on it. I suppose the first opportunity for many local musicians here would be when the Tulla Katy Band first broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. And that one, were great. What do you say now? I think, I think Carol and Hawk used to broadcast before, before they came on. They, were, they, were, they, were, they used to make a, a broadcast two or three times in the, on anyhow. And then, and then Frank Higgins came on after them. Ah, he was, he was, Frank was there. He was nearly, he was nearly next to Coleman that let him there. You're listening to a recording of Frank O'Higgins made by Radio Erin in 1940. The title he had for this tune was The Bag of Meal, but it's better known today as Banish Misfortune. Should have look at all the, the, the great musicians they had, and 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 then they had a great man train them. John Reach, first class man. Kilton all had a good Kelly band too. They they tied with the Tuller uh, as a flat cure with in Tuller, in Tuller one time. But your uh, Tuller was all Ireland and eventually Kilfenora became all Ireland. So it was 50-50 between them at times. What was so unique about the Tuller Kelly band and their sound? The great sort of drive. They had. Uh, lift, the, I suppose. Uh, yeah. There was some, they had something that, that would shift you off of the seat, like, you know, the only way to explain it.
recording made in 1958 by Kiran McMahona. There we heard two reels, Farewell to Connacht and Ballinasloe Fair, played by one of Martin Woods' favourite musical combinations, the Tullock Cayley Band. Now, although the Cayley Band wasn't a feature of musical life in Martin's younger days, there was plenty of informal group playing, and he has very fond memories of one duet. Oh, Connie Hogan and, 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 and Bruce Stanley. They played lovely music. Fiddle and Constantina. Fiddle and Constantina. Beautiful stuff. And, and uh, Willie Lowe used to join them, the flute. And then uh, Stanley had a brother, Richard. He was a great, great flute player too. And, and there was another, and Jim Conway, he used to play the flute. He, he used to play with them. No, they were great musicians. Very hard to have to beat them in, in, a, in a group. You'd often hear that the older musicians had pit tunes, tunes they wouldn't play for certain people. They had prize tunes. Do you remember any of that? No, no, I never, I never remember any of that. Though. They'd give you any tune they had. The, the, exactly. Oh well, yeah. Well, that helped you out. Them two, two men that helped you out, and anyway, uh, uh, Hogan and, and, and Stanley. They'd go to all the uh, rounds. You would get, get it proper. And they weren't a bit narrow-minded around in that part of the country, anyway, about tunes. that you have them. But that they were ch uh, choosy enough in other places, I believe. Don't, don't let you accept. But now you see they're carried. The, 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 the <laughs> they have them on tapes now. Do they like it or not? They played. But there were no tapes that time. Well, thanks to the marvels of tapes and tape recording, the music of Martin Woods is now preserved for a new generation of fiddle players. And another triumph for the tape recorder is the fact that it allowed us to come away with one of Martin's prized tunes, a most unusual hornpipe. <laughs> Martin Woods there with a hornpipe containing a very strange melodic turn. Now so far all the items we've heard from Martin have been single tunes, but for a change now we're going to hear him play some selections of jigs and reels, beginning with three jigs.
a selection of jigs there, ending with a fairly well-known one, Out on the Ocean. Martin continues now with three reels, and these afford us an opportunity to observe some of the dominant elements of the East Clare fiddle style, namely a relaxed pace and a somewhat wistful, even at times eerie sound to the music. Although he doesn't play as much as he used to, Martin still takes part in the odd local session. So I asked him, who does he like playing with? Uh, I, I don't mind, really. I don't mind. But there must be some local players that you, you, you would play well with. Uh, of course, I play a lot with, with Seamus Bugler. He was a young lad. At when he was young, he came over here and we played a lot together. As a matter of fact, we played all over the country. Anyone else? Oh, there's several, several. Jim, Jim Brody, Jim Brody is a grand, grand flute player. Love playing with him. I'm very comfortable. I find very comfortable. Vincent Griffin and Paddy Kenny and Martin Hayes, PJ Hayes. I could be naming them little cows from home. You know, and kind of Tully and all them. Find great pleasure in playing all them. One of the musicians Martin mentioned there was Connor Tully, a very talented young Galway fiddler. And by a coincidence, one of the tunes Martin played for us was a tune he got from Connor Tully. Thank you. 
Martin Woods there playing one of his recent acquisitions, Connor Tully's Reel. Another of Martin's favourite musical companions is flute player Jimmy Brodie. And here now Martin plays Jimmy Brodie's favourite. <laughs> Seventy-seven years old Martin Woods, there playing Jimmy Brodie's favourite. And that brings us more or less to the end of tonight's programme. We hope we've proved what we set out to show, namely that the regional element in the music still survives, and there are musicians around the country who haven't been recorded, but certainly deserve to be recorded. Our thanks again to Martin Woods for the music and to his wife Anastasia for the hospitality provided during the course of a very pleasant day in their home in that quiet and scenic clear countryside around Mount Shannon. We end our look now at the music of Martin Woods with another of his fine local reels. So from all of us here, good night. Presented by Eamon Fitzgerald and produced by Harry Bradshaw.